I found that my mind was often wandering towards feeling sorry for myself, essentially, um, and being unable to sort of justify why it was me that was going through this specific hardship. So at the time, I was training for special forces selection in the Australian Army. Yep. So I'd gone from, you know, your six pack abs, running every day, going to the gym. Huge all the part time. of your identity. Yeah, it was a big part of my identity, my purpose, my future goals, everything. Mm. And and as soon as I lost all of that, I did. I spent countless hours feeling sorry for myself, um, wanting it to end, but not being able to see a solution forward. And yeah, I definitely um, spent time, uh, spent a lot of time on my phone, probably not doing anything very, um, very productive to myself. I guess you weren't accepting it either. Like you wouldn't let yourself accept that. And I can relate to that, like having to, if being a really physical person who valued that and your self-worth is very much intertwined with that and then not being able to do that, that would just be super hard because that part of your identity almost has to die for a period of time and you're gripping onto it because you're like, who am I if I'm not this? Uh, and then getting to the point where it's like, well, if I won't train my body, I'll train my mind. It's a very wise move to make but takes a lot of effort i've recently started reading a lot more and trying to watch a lot less tv and spend less time scrolling aimlessly on netflix or being on my phone because i just know how that makes me feel and that it's necessary to prepare for life as much as you can and use your time and that reading is such a great way of doing that just the way that you feel in yourself and what it does for your mind and how it makes you present, it makes you sleep better, all these things. But it is more effort to open up a book, sit down, stay focused, read it. It has to be something you're interested in. You know, it's very easy, I think, probably for everyone, but young men in particular, with all these other distractions everywhere to just go like, oh, fuck, this is too hard. But why is it worth sticking with it? One of the reasons that uh, I argue probably is the primary reason for reading books. Um, so back when I got injured, uh, COVID wasn't around at the time. Um, so I felt myself feeling very isolated, right? Um, I couldn't really connect to anybody else that had had a similar experience. And unfortunately, even now, it would be rare for me to find someone that has gone through what I have gone through. However, there are people everywhere, all over the world, and in the history of mankind that have gone through similar experiences, similar hardships, and similar isolation periods where they did really struggle um, with everyday life. So the number one reason why I would recommend people, especially in Australia now and all over the world, to read books is because it provides that connection um, that we are missing out on socially with the author of the story and the characters within the book. Uh, and what that allows is it allows us to find perspective in our own lives where, you know, let's say COVID lockdown is really getting to people. Uh, if you were to go and read a book about the Holocaust and World War II, well, that really, really gives you the perspective shift and change in mind, which will allow you to get through sort of any hardship that you can possibly go through. So that's that's the number one reason why I would argue to read books. But the second thing about reading books, what I found is, and obviously I've been in, um, in charge and worked with thousands of men over my uh, decade career within the military. Um, and what I find is with young men um, and with young people in general, uh, is that often they don't know what they want to um, pursue in their life. Their interests, unfortunately, they don't know what they don't know. So the second reason why I really, really think reading books is so important, especially in the 21st century, is it opens your mind to the different possibilities that are out there. I used to think that I was a pretty interesting guy, but I look back now and I say, what were my interests? Well, my interests were going to the gym, drinking beers with my mates, uh, chasing women that were way out of my league. Um, <laughs> but that was a, a, essentially it. And work, obviously, as well. The biggest percentage factor of our time was work. That so sounds familiar. Four, <laughs> yeah, it does sound familiar. It's all of us. It's all of us. And so those four things now, in hindsight, I look back and I'm not discouraging anybody with those habits because I know that I've had them, so I'd be a hypocrite. But I look back at those interests of mine and I say, well, that, that unfortunately is not the best that I can be, uh, you know, and I've just expanded my, my outlook on life so much. And now I have a myriad of different options of different things that maybe I would like to pursue in my life that I wouldn't have otherwise known about except for reading books. And yeah. now innate 
a naysayer might say, well, you know, you can find out all these different ideas from social media. And this ties in to the third most important thing about reading books. When you read books, you go into a state of flow, essentially, like you're, like you're painting a picture, like you're singing a song, like you're playing guitar. Your whole mind, body and energy is focused on the task at hand. You're in the very, moment. Exactly right. And it's very hard to read a book if you're not in the moment, in fact, I would argue that it's impossible. So it forces that sort of, I guess, I'm um, using words that I'm not qualified to use, that theta wave state in your mind, the focus. Uh, and what that does is it allows you to relax. It's a form of meditation. Yeah. But more importantly, and where it differs to social media, it allows you to access your long-term memory. And that is why when you look back to your childhood, you can remember the individual books you were reading in high school. Now, you might not have liked it at the time, and that's fair enough. But you will remember the year 10 book that your teacher made you read at the time. And if you were to compare that to, let's say, a funny meme or a good YouTube video that you saw, you can remember that book from your high school English class for the majority of your life, as opposed to forgetting about a video that you saw literally two minutes ago because you're mindlessly scrolling, yeah. not in the moment. That's all and just so a flash in the pan, that stuff. And I think there's something about, I know people love the Kindles, but there's something about holding a book in your hand as well and actually turning the pages and the experience of that, which is a whole other thing that I certainly prefer to do that, to actually like sit down and read the book. It's just like a very wholesome sort of experience. And I find a big reason why I like doing it is that what you're saying, it, it relaxes you, it calms your mind down. And I think it's good for your eyes to not stare at a screen for one part of the day as well. And I find certainly reading before bed, I always get knocked out pretty quick. Yeah, like I'll get fall asleep pretty quickly from doing it. Uh, but it really settles you down. I think just because taking in all the stimulus from screens, we don't realize because we do it constantly. But I think it just continually G's us up. And that's generally what we do before bed. And taking time after work or whatever it is to read instead it might be more effort at least initially but i just think in in terms of how you feel about yourself even your self-worth and just like the calm that you feel it's it can be quite a rewarding practice one 100 percent, and i i fully acknowledge um what you were saying before about it's it's more difficult to pick up a book and start reading than it is to pick up your phone but um, like you encourage and like we should encourage um, uh, as a society, people that are taking proactive steps um, to benefit their mental health, um, change their life and hopefully live a happier, more rewarding life um, with more experiences, more great stories and more great books. Um, if you look at it in the context of what other practices can you do mm. to better your life, like going to the gym, meditation, long walks on the beach, getting out into the open air. Well, actually, reading books is the easiest thing that you can do yeah. to improve your mental health in terms of effort, time, um, and money as well. Um, yeah. it, it's actually incredible. Yeah, for sure, man. I totally agree. And I guess you got to, everyone's different, but you got to look at the habits that you have now and how are you feeling and how much are your habits related to that. So if you feel distracted and discombobulated and like you can't focus and in your spare time, you spend the whole time scrolling on your phone or on apps or having a million different things open at once, then that's probably going to be tied in with how you feel in your emotional state and if you're able to have the discipline to read a book as just one example and focus on doing one thing and turning a page you might find you actually feel differently inside because just of how we're wired we can't take in all that much stuff at once and feel chilled out we need to especially men we need to just be able to like focus on one thing at a time Mate, you know? and that's why um that's why I love the podcast as well because it is it's such a simple placid way to take the information in um, relax while you're doing it and focus as well so it's, yeah. um, it's a it's a beautiful platform to do what you do and it's an incredible tool podcasting and reading and obviously so many valuable podcasts are inspired by authors and by books and they come in and they do their book promotion they speak about the book and that's a great way of taking it in as well I think reading the book's probably the ultimate but you can take in a lot of calm and knowledge from listening to a podcast but that's what that would be the fourth thing that I would add to yours would be just the wisdom that's available to us from ancient teachers from teachers around the world now who've literally spent their entire lives studying 
these things and putting in so much work to finding these answers in life. And then they put them down in writing or they put them on a podcast and they say like, it's taking my whole career to figure this out. Like I have learned it here. Have it like we'd be rude to not engage with that because we just have this incredible opportunity that's never existed before in human history where we can take in all this really valuable stuff. But because it takes a bit of effort or we might not know where to go looking for it, we kind of just like, Oh, no, I can't be bothered. Like I'll just, I'll just stay on my phone. <laughs> 100% and um, and yeah, just, just to reiterate that point, it'd be rude not to, that, that's the beauty. Um, everything that you will experience and have experienced in your life has been experienced by someone else. Um, and there's a great saying from the Two Commando Parachute um, School here in Australia, which is knowledge dispels fear. Yeah, and, and that we fear what we don't understand. Exactly right. And so what better way than to go and find out about the problem? As soon as you understand that one, you're not alone, and two, someone's done this before, well then your problems quickly um, dissipate. It's so powerful to know you're not alone and to know that there is information out there to get you through.